All right, I did have somebody ask me about these push rods. And uh, originally we were going to use these uh, SCAT push rods. We did have, went and did our uh, rocker arm geometry and our setup with these. And uh, unfortunately I had them laying on the floor. And I dropped something off the motor and it hit the push rod. And I bent the sheet out of it. So I'm not going to use these anymore. I'll keep these for spares. And I went down to Scooters and picked up some of the Berg uh, push rods. These are uh, steel, but they're 4130 chrome molly. And uh, they're high strength. Uh, we use these in Noel's car, and uh, we don't bend push rods anymore. These are quite a bit thicker than the, uh, than the Scott deal. Let me see if I have one here we can compare it to. Here's, uh, here's the deal here for you. There's the comparison. You can see the scat is on uh, this side, the black one. You can see the wall thickness difference. And uh, this is how they come. They sort of come long. Uh, in case you put a lot of barrel space under the motor, they give you enough material to uh, tailor the push rod to the engine if it's going to be wide. I like to try to keep my motors narrow so they fit in the car. So uh, we have a 150,000 spacer on this. Uh, we use a 60,000 copper gasket, and then we use 90,000 under the jig for a total of 150. So these are two push rods I've already made, and uh, you know you have to be very careful when you make these. They need to be really close to the same length. You have a little bit of uh, adjustment on your adjusting nut, but you want the adjuster nut to be, you know, sort of at the uh, all the way at the end of the adjustment where you have full adjustment left to wear, you know, and uh, usually you don't have any wear, but I like to keep the adjuster as much in the rocker arm as I can. And what I mean by that is I don't like to screw this nut all the way in to meet the push rod. You want to have some uh, surface of your uh, adjuster coming out of the end of the nut. You know, don't ever run the adjuster through where you have more nut showing than adjuster because you'll make it weak. The more that you can keep this cup towards the body of the rocker arm, the stronger it'll be and the less uh, you're going to have uh, breakage. We did end up with a 15,000 shim under these to get the correct geometry, which isn't bad. It's a very small shim. These are the shims we use when we do that. They're uh, under the rocker stand. So those are, uh, that's all done. And we just have to uh, make some push rods. So I'll set you up on the toolbox here so you can see how I do this. Again, this is how I do it. You, uh, there's a hundred ways to do this. I like to use my, uh, let me get something to put under this camera so we don't, so you guys don't fall off the toolbox. There we go. But anyway, what I do is use the uh, valve tipper on my uh, valve grinder, it works really good. It holds the uh, push rod nice and flat. And we're using the tipping stone, which is a completely flat surface and it's made to uh, tip valves. So the uh, 60,000 wall thickness on the push rod is no match and it makes easy work of it. And you get a nice flat finish. So your tip will sit flat in the push rod. Woo. Where we at right there when you press that in you want it to be uh concentric to the push rod all the way around you don't want to have any gappies if you do uh if you run the motor a while it'll collapse the push rod and then you'll have to readjust the valves and that's no good so uh try to cut it as flat as you can you can do it on a lathe uh some guys try to do it with uh hacksaw blades and it's uh very difficult to get them flat that way and the same length so anyway, here we go.
it's better to check it a hundred times than try to grind it all at once because once it's too short, it's too short. And once you put the tip in, you're done. Just a little bit more here. I'm going to take a pair of snap ring pliers or something that has a bevel on it, stick it in the push rod, and we'll uh, turn it. Clean up any uh, smeg mite that's in there. You know, when you cut that much off, you usually get a little bit of a residual inside the tube. Now we're gonna check it one more time for height. That's gonna be about perfect. Now it's very important to clean the tube out after the cutting process. A little carburetor cleaner. I'm going to make sure that's uh, fairly clean inside the tube. Uh, now it's time to get the metal shavings out of there, not uh, in the oil filter. Here's the difference in the ends between the, uh, the Berg and is chrome plated. And the scat end is just rough finished. Come hold the camera for a minute for me. I'll get Andrea to uh, hold the camera and I'll show you how to install these ends in the push rod. This one's going to need a touch more uh, cleanup in the center. I have a deburring tool here. This works good too. I just need you to hold the camera. I'm going to uh, pound this end in. Put the camera up. Right here, Andrew. I know, I'm coming around to this side. Where did my point? Where Down here, okay. on the floor. Pick the camera up, man, what are you doing? Down here, please. All right, use uh, two lifters and a hammer to uh, do this part. And I like to uh, stick the end in the uh, push rod. Just give it a slight tap. Get it started in there, turn it over. You hear it change tone, you can stop hammering. And there you go. That's how you make a push rod, cut the length. Hope that helps somebody. Hope Andrew didn't make you too dizzy. Anyway, here we go. We got three of them now, and uh, move on to number four. There you go. Sexy. So that's how you do that, and I uh, hope that helps somebody. It's real important to deburr the inside of the tube. You know, you want to definitely do that, and then you know, make sure you clean the outside up so you don't have any residual falling in the motor. But, uh, let me do that uh, six more times, five more times, five more, and uh, we'll be ready to go. I'll adjust the valves and uh, bring you guys back in a little bit.